It's expensive to cover pregnancy. It's expensive to cover cancer. It's expensive to cover a lot of things, but we cover those and we should cover transgender health care as well. Pride at Work represents LGBTQ plus union members and their allies. They organize mutual support between the organized labor movement and the LGBTQ plus community to further social and economic justice. Jeremy Davis is the executive director of this organization, and he is our guest today. Jeremy, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Jacob. So tell us a little bit about your background, uh, how you got involved in the labor movement. Well, you know, I um, was, uh, it was actually in 1999, um, I and two other guys who are gay were fired for being gay from our jobs. And um, it's an incredibly long story, but uh, the short version is that Pride at Work uh, and the labor movement were the only folks who would come to our assistance. So um, <clears throat> Pride at Work taught us how to have a, a, a rally and a picket. They taught us how to speak to the media, how to have, uh, uh, how to write a press release, all of the things necessary to run a full campaign against um, the employer that ultimately ended up being, we were in Indiana and we became the first LGBTQ discrimination case in the state of Indiana settled for a monetary award. That state still today doesn't have LGBTQ protections in law. Has, uh, um, it, it, am I remembering right that LGBT protections have been uh, federalized by a Supreme Court case? That's true. Um, in uh, just uh, a year ago um, or two years ago, uh, whatever it was, I've lost track with this pandemic. Um, the, the Supreme Court ruled that, um, that LGBTQ discrimination is sex discrimination under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So it is illegal federally, um, but I think anybody who, who has been through the federal discrimination process and, and trying to navigate that, it's incredibly difficult um, and expensive. You know, you have to hire your own lawyer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, you know, especially if you don't have, you know, the protections of a union contract, at least if you have a union contract, um, you have the protections of the union and the support of the union, uh, which, you know, obviously no state uh, or federal law provides that kind of support that a union does. Right, right. And we've talked about um, on this show multiple times the... Um, you know, the, the, the paltry nature of, you know, federal discrimination law, the EEOC, uh, labor law, protecting our right to organize. You know, we have we have all of these things on paper and sometimes people can win ta cases, but it takes years. It takes years oftentimes. And and what happens in the meantime? Maybe workers go homeless. They've been without a job for that long. They've had to get another job. And so um, the payment that they get for being fired for organizing is nothing because um, if you're organizing on the job and you get fired for it, that's technically illegal. But the remedy for that is to be made whole. And so if you've made wages between now and then, you don't get anything from it because you're already whole as far as the law is concerned. And and so the the best way to, even though theoretically we've got these these things as rights by the government, um, the best way to actually enforce them, the best way to actually protect them is, is through organization, unionization, uh, coming together with your your uh, fellow workers and making your boss uh, um, respect these rights that you have. Absolutely. You know, um, with often with federal law, um, the 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 real protection is the fear of the employer. And if that employer doesn't fear that lawsuit, um, you know, right. they could just walk right over federal law. Right. Right. And so what is the focus of it? Well, talk to us some about about Pride at Work. What it, uh, wh what is Pride at Work beyond, you know, how I opened it and, and what is kind of the focus of your organization? 
So we're a, an official LGBTQ constituency group for the AFL-CIO. Uh, and, you know, so we represent LGBTQ union members throughout the labor movement. Um, and, you know, we're, we're fighting for LGBTQ inclusion within our unions, in our workplaces, um, and in the public square. So, you know, we organize within the labor movement. Uh, for example, we have our convention coming up um, in a couple months in Minneapolis in August, um, which is, you know, where we gather together uh, to kind of strategize and plot out what's going to happen over the next few years. Um, but we also, you know, a lot of our work is educating unions on what their LGBTQ members need. Um, a lot of unions are just now starting to wake up to the fact that they have LGBTQ members that they need to serve in slightly different ways, maybe than 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 um, other members. And so, you know, we get called out a lot to do what we call LGBTQ 101, um, which is the basics of, OK, so here's how you talk about LGBTQ people. Here's how you deal with certain situations like lack of bathroom access for trans people. Um, or discrimination, or, you know, we also work on contract language. Uh, we have a repository of contract language that um, has actually passed in contracts that we can pull from. And we can also help with crafting contract language uh, that's LGBTQ inclusive, uh, you know, if we don't have something to model from already. That's just yes. a little bit of what we do. You know, we and, also... And well, and that is all I just want to I just want to call out for folks. We we have, you know, lots of lots of union folks uh, that listen to the program. And so maybe they're interested in some of this stuff. You can go directly to their website, pride at work dot org, pride at work dot org. And if you're if you hover your mouse over the resources tab at the top of the page, you've got those things right there. Model contract language, LGBTQ plus 101, uh, the union difference stuff that is that that is really on a super practical level helpful for union leaders that want to support their members but are maybe not educated on you know on, on these topics they've not had to maybe they haven't been aware of representing uh you know lgbt folks in the past and they want to make sure that their union is doing a good job making sure that these people are not being harassed by their by their sisters and brothers on the job being harassed by their bosses um and fostering that solidarity among co-workers and protection from the boss um Really, really cool stuff here. Thanks. Yeah, we uh, we try to keep that information updated and fresh, you know, as the laws change, as Supreme Court rulings come down, whatever the case, um, and as the language changes uh, and new concepts come to the fore, you know, so, um, you know, always check the website. Um, but then, you know, if there's something there that, that you need that, or that's not there that you need, you can certainly contact us. Uh, we can do trainings. We can talk about what your needs are uh, and help you figure it out. And so what kind of what kind of stuff do y'all go over in the trainings? We go over things like language, um, you know, how to talk about LGBTQ people and issues. We go over uh, things like pronouns uh, and, and how how that kind of sort of ever shifting um, uh, uh, space uh, should work and, and, and what, what it means to respect someone's pronouns. Uh, we go over the kind of economic impacts of, uh, LGBTQ discrimination and what that, how that plays out in the community and what it looks like. You know, one, one example is, uh, during the pandemic, um, one of the things that we learned was if you were an LGBTQ person, you're 36% more likely to have lost your job or had your income reduced than the average population. Um, that's just very clearly discrimination. There's no reason for LGBTQ people to have suddenly been, you know, more impacted by the pandemic than other people. Um, but what it seems like happened is when companies started making cuts, you know, they cutted the less desirable folks first. Right, right. And what about model contract language? What is some of the stuff that y'all are um, particularly proud of having been able to put in contracts? You know, um, we're, we're really proud, you know, first of all, that so many unions and we've kind of lost track of how many because, you know, it depends on every contract is different. But um, how many contracts now contain just the basic 
protections for sexual orientation and gender identity and expression. Um, but one of the coolest, and then of course, we've gotten more language about uh, transgender healthcare. That's been an important issue. But one of the things that, that we've seen um, in some contracts is, you know, a lot of um, LGBTQ, well, a lot of uh, uh, health insurance plans don't cover everything necessary for a transgender person's uh, full health care needs. There may be some things uh, that the insurance policy considers cosmetic, or there may be some things um, that just aren't covered. And so um, I've seen and helped with contract language that provides for like a fund that, uh, that members can draw from for things that aren't covered by the traditional plan. Uh, one of the other things that we did recently was um, a major employer, uh, U U.S. Steel. Um, we helped the steel workers uh, combat U.S. Steel. They had a healthcare plan that did not cover, I think it was 24 procedures um, for uh, transgender workers that they considered cosmetic. And we were able to help the steel workers successfully argue with the company that those procedures should be covered. And now they are. That's great. That's, I mean, that, this is, you know, this is real kind of a, a lot of times that, uh, you know, and, and, and maybe even I, I should do a better job, but there, there are a lot of times that, that people, um, kind of whiff away, culture war stuff as meaningless and a distraction but in 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 many instances culture war type stuff is a real material impact to the people that it's targeted against you know so a uh, culture war issues quote unquote you know abortion gay rights trans rights these are things that are uh th that are, are aren't going to necessarily directly affect me they affect me in that i care about you know my coworkers and and uh people that are in the working class but but as far as you know i could go about and ignore it and and my life would more or less be the same uh but for those people uh you know being fired is a real being fired for being gay or trans is a real material impact and so fighting sure for, for gay rights fighting for trans rights uh that is a real material thing it's not a material thing for the people that are fighting against these folks that are trying to demonize these people but for the people that are on the receiving end of these attacks in a lot of instances it is real and it is material um in a in a very in a very economic and 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 social sense of the word um, th that I think it's important to recognize. Yeah. And y'all are doing the kind of work that provides the material response and benefits by by ensuring that people can have the health care that they need by protecting people from being fired in a discriminatory way. That's that's huge. And so, you know, I think what you're doing is just so important and, and it's it's critical that unions continue to have dialogue on these issues and not just kind of brush it aside as not really our thing. Because I think unions, sometimes we get in our, you know, quote unquote, bread and butter issues and we want to talk uh -huh. about pay raises and we want to talk about pensions. And those are super important. Uh, but we also have to reflect on is everybody getting the pay raise? Is everyone getting the pension and the health care that they deserve? So, you know, that's just it's just very, very important what y'all are doing. And, and I think that's fantastic that y'all are putting out even sample language that other full union, contracts, full even. contract. Yeah, that's, you know, unions who are maybe coming from a place of inexperience have a resource like Pride at Work to get plugged into. Absolutely. And, you know, you're, you're so right about the, the economic impact that, that this can have, you know, if a, if, you know, there, the number of transgender people, for example, in the labor movement, or in, in the country in general, is relatively small. But the impact of not covering all of their healthcare needs is absolutely huge. Some of those procedures can be expensive. Some things are lifelong, like hormone therapy or um, you know any kind of mental health uh, uh, help. And um, if you have to pay those things out of pocket, they can be prohibitively expensive. 
Um, whereas, you know, it's, it's, it's a rounding error in the total cost of the, the, the healthcare budget. Um, it doesn't really have an impact on, you know, study after study has shown that, that, covering transgender healthcare does not have a material impact on the cost for the overall plan. Um, you know, it's expensive to cover pregnancy. It's expensive to cover cancer. It's expensive to cover a lot of things, but we cover those and we should cover transgender healthcare as well. Uh, another thing that y'all have through Pride at Work is is local chapters. Uh, talk to us mm-hmm. about some of the work that, that your local chapters do and, and maybe... Um, how to get involved in in your local chapter or create one if there isn't a local chapter. Absolutely. Yeah, we have, um, well, our chapters are growing and the number is ever changing. I know we have over 20 now um, and some new ones that are starting up. So I don't have an exact count, but we, we will keep that information updated on the website, which is exactly how you can get involved. Some of the things that they're doing, you know, um, in uh, Washington state, uh, you know, we have a chapter in uh, the Tacoma area that uh, started their, the Tacoma area uh, Pride Festival. They didn't have one until our chapter got it started. Um, you know, they're working on things, uh, you know, locally with, with local issues. Um, the, uh, in, in New York, for example, um, we have a, an initiative called the Pride at Work Initiative, which is where I'm at today actually is in New York City, um, that uh, is working on trying to get LGBTQ people into union jobs through workforce programs. So, for example, um, the uh, SEIU affiliate here has a workforce program that they uh, help operate. Um, and we are working with them and several other union adjacent um, and LGBTQ adjacent workforce programs to make sure that they both know how to um, recruit and maintain LGBTQ workers um, and make sure that they make it through the program. Because one of the things that, that we found is like, especially with something like an apprenticeship program, um, if you're an LGBTQ person, you're significantly more likely not to complete the program through, you know, sometimes those programs can be three years or more. Um, and a lot of that is just poor treatment or in a lack of understanding in the program of the needs of the LGBTQ folks, um, harassment, things like that. So, um, you know, we, we do a variety of work and our chapters have um, a lot of autonomy to figure out what to work on locally. Um, and, you know, we encourage that to start a new chapter. You know, if there isn't one in your area, it's, it's pretty easy. You know, we can walk you through that process. You just reach out to us at, um, pride at work.org. Um, all of our contact information is there and, you know, it, 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 to start a basic chapter requires only five members and, um, the representation of at least one union in, in amongst those five members. Um, and you can grow from there. So, uh, it's super easy and it can have a huge impact on the labor movement in your area. Jeremy Davis, executive director of pride at work. You can learn more at pride at work.org. Is there anything else, uh, you'd like to share with us before we let you go? I uh, also want to give a call out to our convention. As I mentioned, it's in Minneapolis in August, uh, August 18th through 20th. You can learn more at outfordemocracy.com or on our website at prideatwork.org. Um, we'd love to have some folks from the South join us. Uh, you know, one of the things that we kind of lack right now is more representation in the South, and we'd love to um, see more labor uh, members from the South at our convention. And we'd love to see that as well. Keep up the good work. Jeremy, I appreciate it. Thank you. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project, and you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.